Hi everyone, it's been a while since my last video, but I finally finished uh, building and debugging the printed circuit board that I had made for my Z80 computer. Um, as you can see over here, we have the RC2014 computer kit that I ordered. This is just a passive backplane that connects all the bus signals together. This is a sound card using the YM2149 uh, chip that was used in the MSX and I believe uh, maybe the original Sega, ColecoVision, and a few other computers. This is the Z80 CPU board and then this is a 64K RAM board with uh, some logic decoding to bank the RAM in and out and some jumpers to select the starting address. Over here we have the actual completed board that I worked on. You can see it has headers along the bottom to connect to the bus. So the clock's here. The crystal for the clock is here. The ABR is here. This is the IO expander. Um, this is a 74HCT139, which is a dual 2 to 4 decoder. It's used for two things. First of all, these headers allow you to select a range of I.O. ports that the AVR will respond to, and that the flip flop here, 74HCT74, will trigger um, in order to halt the CPU and wait for the AVR to respond to the I.O. You can select all um, the entire range of I.O. ports or um, four different ranges of 64 I.O. ports or no I.O. ports. Um, here we have a halt button and a reset button supporting circuitry there. The SD card is here. This is a um, SD breakout that I bought from Pololu that includes a three volt power supply and three volt level, level shifters um, to make the uh, SD card work with the five volt uh, power supply of the AVR. Um, here, uh, this is an activity indicator for the uh, SD card. It comes on whenever the chip select for the SD card is um, active. Um, up here, I have the original PCB as it came from OSH Park um, without any of the uh, components soldered onto it. Um, on the back, you can see I have my name, and then here uh, is a little guide for which settings to use on the jumpers to select the I.O. addresses. Um, over here is a partially built board that I was putting together when I was troubleshooting some things. Um, this is another version of the board that someone else uh, built using my design. Uh, they had it manufactured at a different manufacturer called uh, Seed Studio. And then here's another partially completed board using that PCB. Uh, down here is the prototype that I began putting together for this on Perfect Board. Um, I got tired of soldering all the lines, so I never got this done. I just went ahead and manufactured the printed circuit board. Uh, going back to this, I did run into a few problems um, on the serial header, which is here. Uh, I ran a trace a little too close to the edge of the board and actually ended up shorting this... Uh, this is the DTR pin that's used to reset the AVR, and then this is the ground pin. And the ground pin ended up shorting out with the DTR pin, um, and interfering with the reset circuit also could have damaged my um, serial adapter. So I 
cut the traces with an X-Acto knife on either side of the ground so that it's no longer shorted out. And then I used a little bodge wire here to connect the DTR pin to this capacitor as it was originally intended to be. Uh, let's see, another mistake that I made was this decodes the, the second thing that this is used for is to, to decode the address of the SPI peripheral, either the um, SD card, the IO expander, or uh, any other SPI peripherals that can be connected to bus these last six pins here. Um, export the SPI signals. So anyway, this decodes those uh, from two pins output from the AVR to a total of four um, SPI peripheral chip selects. Um, and I made a mistake uh, connecting the uh, SPI address pins. I crossed the zero and the one bit when I was connecting to this. So um, the addresses are backwards, but that could be fixed in software. Um, the most vexing problem that I encountered when I first put this together, I couldn't get the, um, the SD card to work. And I ended up spending a lot of time scratching my head actually with, until somebody else built this and told me that theirs was working, I could I had kind of given up on getting this to work. So the guy um, sent me these boards that he had had manufactured, and when I hooked those up, the SD card still didn't work. So that made me realize maybe the problem is not with my board; it's actually with the back plane and what I found out is that these two pins here which is where I export the SCK and the MISO pins for the SPI bus were actually shorted together um, somehow on slot 11. Um, I cut the traces on either side of slot 11 and um, by process of elimination, I determined that this is a slot that actually has the problem. Um, I don't see any visible solder bridges, but there must be something somewhere on this slot that's connecting those pins together. And that was what was uh, causing crosstalk between the clock and the MISO, which is master in slave out. That's the data line where data comes out of the SD card into the microprocessor. So those two signals were interfering with each other and that's why I couldn't talk to the SD card. So last night I finally figured all that out. Um, I've got my uh, back plane sort of hacked together to fix those problems. And now everything works. Um, I can plug in the card here into the first slot and plug it in and then uh, connect the USB adapter to the terminal on my computer. There it is. And I'll flip the on switch. Ta-da! And the IR, the SD card is working. Load hex hello dot hex and it's and this is just to show you the board that I have has um, all the components either emulated in software or in hardware to replace all four of these boards which were originally uh, part of the RC2014 kit. So here we have the clock, we have the serial adapter, we have a ROM, and we have a compact flash which acts as the drive. So all of these boards are replaced by the single board that I built.